the government of Tonga has made. Also, I am grateful to the Tonga Meteorological Service for its tireless work. Distinguished members of the media, I am in Tonga to issue a global SOS, Save Our Seas, on rising sea levels. A worldwide catastrophe is putting this specific paradise in peril. Global average sea levels are rising at rates unprecedented in the past 3,000 years. Today's reports confirm that the relative sea levels in the southwestern Pacific have risen even more than the global average in some locations by more than double the global increase in the past 30 years. Ocean temperatures are increasing at up to three times the rate worldwide, and Pacific Islands are uniquely exposed. The changes here in the Pacific region are visible since my last visit. And around the world, rising seas have unparalleled power to cause havoc to coastal cities and ravage coastal economies. <coughs> the reason is clear. Greenhouse gases, overwhelmingly generated by burning fossil fuels, are cooking our planet. And the sea is taking the heat, literally. It has absorbed. Can you imagine the impact on this beautiful capital city of Nuku Alofa? But what happens in Tonga did not start in Tonga and it doesn't end here. Surging seas are coming for us all, together with the devastation of fishing, tourism, and the blue economy. Across the world, around a billion people live in coastal areas, from low lying islands to mega cities, from tropical agricultural deltas to Arctic communities. Coastal megacities, including Dhaka, Los Angeles, Mumbai, Lagos, and Shanghai, are threatening by our swelling ocean. Global leaders must step up to drastically slash global emissions, to lead a fast and fair phase out of fossil fuels, and to massively boost climate adaptation investments to protect people from present and future risks. We cannot go on blaming each other. We absolutely need all G20 countries to come together to use the best technologies available within the G20, to use the financial resources that exist within the G20 and in multilateral development institutions, and to have a concerted global action to have a drastic reduction of emissions in until 2030. If that does not happen, we will be in an irreversible situation with absolutely devastating consequences.